Well, as the title of this video says, how to start collecting Pokemon cards in 2024. That's what we're talking about today. If you've just got into the hobby, or maybe if you've been in it for six months or nine months or even 12 months and you're sort of still finding your feet, this would be a really, really good video for you. I know a lot of my videos, uh, videos, <laughs> my viewers, a lot of the viewers of my videos are getting quite experienced when it comes to Pokemon card investing or collecting. So this might not be the video for you, but I'm sure you could still learn something off it. Well, how to start collecting Pokemon cards in 2024. Here's the first disclaimer I want to make before we actually get into the nuts and bolts around this video. And that is, it is a great time to get back into the hobby. There is perhaps a little bit of doom and gloom and presented around maybe some, you know, a few content creators and, you know, a few articles around Pokemon card collecting. But I can guarantee you it's a beautiful and great time to get back into the hobby. Uh, it's at an all-time high. Game sales for obviously the new Scarlet and Violet have absolutely gone through the roof. We have some great artwork, great cards. The chase and pull rates for a lot of the chase cards are better than ever. So if you're just starting to get into it and you want to actually pull some hits, there's no better time than now when it comes to pull rates. The second disclaimer I wanted to make, other than it's a fantastic time to get back into the hobby, is before you even start getting back into the hobby, make sure you've got something to put your cards in, okay? Make sure you've got yourself a really nice high-end binder, okay? Something that's going to be protecting your cards that you pull. Make sure you've got sleeves to put them in. Make sure you've got top loaders to put them in if you want to display them on a shelf or a, or a cabinet or something like that. And if you're collecting sealed Pokemon card products, it's not a bad idea to buy something to protect them. Like, and I'm certainly not advocating it, but I use, and a lot of people ask what, uh, and I'll get this nice and close for you, you know, what do you use to protect your booster boxes? And I've just got that sitting inside an Ultra Pro um, acrylic case. So if you're gonna get into collecting Pokemon cards and investing in Pokemon cards, be careful of that, it's a Japanese 151 booster box. One day they're gonna be worth a lot. So be gentle, be gentle, <laughs> anyway. One day, I've lost my train of thought now. Anyway, make sure you buy something to protect your Pokemon cards. Let's get into the nuts and the bolts of the video though. Okay, before we do though, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you wanna become a channel member, also please do so. It'll allow you to shoot me an email and I'll get back to you with some personalized investment advice. That's the whole idea behind becoming a member. That's the perk you get as, long as, as well as some badges that go alongside your name, I think, when you comment. So thanks to everyone that is a member. I really, really appreciate it. So, the first tip, before we even, I said we're about to get into the nuts and bolts, before we get into the real nuts and bolts is, I'd say if you're getting off collecting, don't buy mystery packs, okay? Like, Pokemon cards is already a gamble, and buying a mystery pack is just adding, like, gambling on top of gambling. Like, I don't know, if, if you love that sort of thing, go for it, but it's not my sort of thing. I, I wouldn't go out and buy mystery packs when I've just started collecting Pokemon cards. But here's what I think you should do, okay? Rather than buy mystery packs, buy genuine products, okay? Buy the products produced by Pokemon Company International. That's obviously the best idea. Now, when it comes to getting into the hobby, a lot of people can just go bang and spend a lot of money very quickly, and it can get out of hand really, really quickly. And before you know it, you might have spent $1,000 or $2,000 or even $5,000 in a couple of months before you've even realized. And then you look at the value of what you got and you're going, phew, you know, I've spent three grand and I think I've got maybe $800 worth of cards or $1,000 worth of cards and maybe a sealed box left. And you go, whoa, like where did that money go? So you're just getting into the hobby. This could possibly make it more enjoyable for you. So here's my advice. If you want to open packs, which is great because that's part of getting into the hobby. It's, it's very boring doing what I do because I don't open too many packs. I keep everything sealed, which is incredibly boring and takes a lot of willpower. But I do it because I'm predominantly, like I love sealed investing. I've made mistakes in the past of opening things that I shouldn't have opened. And I think it's a fun alternative investment. So that's why I keep things sealed. But if you're getting into the hobby, of course you want to open packs. It's fun. Opening packs is heaps of fun. The thrill of the chase or pulling a chase card even is so much fun. That's the whole idea really behind Pokemon cards is to open them and have fun and try and pull a good hit. That's what we all did as kids if you're in your 30s and that's what kids are still doing now. So that's the whole idea behind it. So if you're going to open packs, my suggestion would be to, 
to buy a fun set maybe that has a fair few hits inside it. Now that might be a set like Crown Zenith, okay, the last Sword and Shield set, or really any Scarlet and Violet set. The pull rates throughout Scarlet and Violet are pretty strong. Like if you're buying sets like Paldea Evolve or Obsidian Flames or Paradox Rift, which has, yeah, here's a good word again, I used this in the last video, I think, plethora, it has a plethora of um, illustration rares and special illustration rares. So you can be getting almost like a hit every second pack, it feels like, or about 45% of packs in a set like Obsidian Flames will have some sort of hit from an EX through to a special illustration rare. So I think if you're gonna open packs, try and do it with one of those sets. It's a bit rough. Like if you're buying some of the earlier Sword and Shield sets, which have some absolute bangers inside them, but you could be left very scarred. Sets like Evolving Skies, Chilling Rain, Fusion Strike, they're boom or bust sort of sets. It's probably not gonna be all that fun as a new investor collector opening those sets because you might open 50 booster packs and pull nothing and you might have spent $500 to do that. Like it's just, it can be rough. So my suggestion is buy one of the new Scarlet and Violet sets if you wanna open or a set like Crown Zenith or even, you know, your, your latter Sword and Shield set, sets like Lost Origin, Silver Tempest, uh, even things like Brilliant Stars and Astral Radiance because if you're opening 20 or so packs and you've got Trainer Gallery cards inside there, you're bound to pull something, an EX, Trainer Gallery, even an old art, like the possibility is still of the strong chase of the old art. So that's my suggestion for sets to open, just to have that fun because whatever you open, you are bound to lose money, okay? If you buy a 36-pack booster box, which again, is probably the best value when it comes to opening packs and opening a full booster box. You're getting 36 packs inside a booster box. Let's say you bought, and I'm just plucking a set out of the air, let's say you bought a Silver Tempest booster box because, uh, again, it's got a trainer gallery, it's got the big chase of the Lugia alt art. Let's say you bought that because you wanna have some fun and you got it for 130 US dollars or 215 Australian dollars and you open it and you pull maybe you know a fair few trainer gallery cards and a couple of EXs, you get your 12 or 13 hits outside of the box because that's what you're bound to get out of a 36 pack booster box, especially one of those ladder sword and shield sets. And let's say maybe you pull 40 US dollars or 70 Australian dollars worth of value out of the box, okay? You've turned 130 US dollars into 40. You've lost money because you haven't pulled the Lugia alt art. That's probably the only way you're gonna make your money back on a Silver Tempest booster box but there needs to be some sort of cost attached to that fun side. Like opening a booster pack and having fun and that thrill of the chase, there's gotta be some sort of fun cost. And I'm not gonna steal the words out of someone else's mouth, but Danny Phantom does this really well. He talks about the fun cost of opening a booster box, which I think is a really nice analogy. So credit to him in regards to that fun cost when it comes to opening a booster box. You've gotta think about that, okay? The other genuine product as a new investor that, or a collector, I should say, that you might want to pick up is something like an Elite Trainer Box. And these new Pokemon 151 Elite Trainer Boxes are an absolutely stellar product. Not only do you get nine booster packs inside it, you're getting that beautiful Snorlax uh, promo card inside there. You're getting um, energy cards. You're getting dice to play the game. You're getting a, uh, what else do you get? The player's guide, I think, which sort of runs you through the game if you're sort of coming back into it or new to it again. You know, those sort of things are going to help you if you want to get into playing the game because that's uh, obviously going to be going to be a heap of fun. Uh, now, when it comes to singles, right, like you might want to, and here's the best way to do it. Maybe in the vicinity somewhere between four to nine months after a set comes out is probably when you're going to be able to pick up singles at their cheapest especially, you know, nine months, because there's every chance the sets had a reprint, there's every chance lots of products have been opened up, and there's more and more singles hitting the market. So if you look at a set like Obsidian Flames, for argument's sake, that main Charizard chase card, which is a really nice artwork, still not as good as Powder and Fate's Charizard artwork, if, uh, if I do have to say so myself, but you pull that chase, or you buy that chase card when the set first comes out, you're going to be paying a premium to have it first up. As more Obsidian Flames comes out, more gets printed, more gets opened, more supply of Charizard EX special illustration rares in the market, and therefore price drops, okay? We start seeing more supply and we start seeing a dip in the price. So if you're buying, you know, four to nine months or five to nine months after launch, that's the best time to pick up singles. The best way to get singles is not by opening booster packs. You could, 
and there's every chance you would get it, but you could open four or five booster boxes of Obsidian Flames and not get a Charizard EX. And that's going to cost you four or five hundred US dollars, or you could go out and spend 50 or 60 US dollars and just buy the card. So when it comes to singles, the best way to get your singles isn't by opening sealed product, it's by picking and choosing and finding deals online and buying the singles that you want. I think that's the best way really to get into the hobby and start collecting, purchasing the singles you want, having some fun and opening a bit of sealed product, buying things like elite trainer boxes or maybe um, build and battle stadiums, I guess. I don't really promote those, but if you actually want to get into playing the game, those things can be beneficial for you. And uh, when it comes to sealed product, if you want to be like myself, I just buy one of everything. And if I think it's really, really investable, I'll buy multiple, multiple items at the right price for that product to build up my investment portfolio. If you've just got back into the hobby, I hope this has helped you. I'm Michael, this is Pokey Oz, and I'll catch everyone next time.